All right, friends. I swap friend sim, volume 18. Let's go. Yeah, I've I've heard mixed things about the epilogues to non binary so probably why I haven't like rushed to read them, but I might do that at some point. All right, volume 18 of endings, many. You crash landed onto a planet called Alternia. You staggered from the wreckage of your ship. You were desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you were desperate for... Friendship! Is what you could say if you were written by a bunch of hacks who cared about the... The, the Aristotelian... The, the Aristotelian... How is that word pronounced? Arist, Aristotelian... I don't know. The whatever ideal of narrative unity. <laughs> Possibly you could make some reference to a circle being complete in a thoughtless and imbecilic manner. But we're all in this together, right? And we've all learned and grown enough to know that there's something deep and dark and absurd brewing beneath the surface. There is, we've been seeing that for like the last several streams, that there's some sort of like narrative fourth wall time and space shenanigans going on here. What the hell dadgum heck is happening? This isn't really about friendship anymore, is it? You've got enough friends, now you need answers. You need... Oh, god damn it. This was just the intro screen. <laughs> what was that all about? What was it about to say? You need... Oh, god damn it, this is just the intro screen? What the hell? What the hell is going on? Alright. So we've got Lank, Bombix, and we've got Barzum and Bisley. Who seem to be like some sort of like comedy and drama thing going comedy and tragedy thing going on here. Alright. Well, let's go with Lank first. What's next on the docket? Oh, you're really feeling like going completely off the rails. <laughs> let's bump the music down a bit. Ooh, I like this tune. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my volume levels, making sure it's not too loud. Um, all right. <laughs> Quote marks for weird time shenanigans. Yes. So it's a good thing the first person to ping you on your palm husk is Lynera. That nutty bitch is exactly the sort of destabilizing influence your life needs right now. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Because that's what we are now. I totally forgot what voice I did for Lanera, so I'm gonna just apologize for that in advance. Friends! Cool, that's not a weird at all way to talk to someone. You're really loving this one. You're not sure what it is, but you're positive whatever crackpot caper this loopy troll is about to rope you into is going to be a real humdinger. There's a sense of finality in the air. You can taste it. Lanera does you the courtesy of listening to you say all that shit without getting super put off by how much of a freak you are. <laughs> Listen up! So, I was thinking, since us, be since us becoming friends has worked out so well, I'm starting to think maybe it'd be a good idea to give making more friends a shot after all, I guess? This music isn't on your list, you definitely know it but can't recall the title. That's okay, Hero Sapiens. That's what I was thinking. So there's this party I was invited to. You see, the fellow jades in my cloister always sneak out to go to these things. You gently suggest to Lynera that she should hurry at the fuck up. Oh, thanks, Riri Recursive. Also, hi, Riri. Welcome in. Happy Saturday. Pull up a chair and get cozy. Frostbite by Toby Fox. You gently suggest, okay, I already said that. Okay, so I'm nervous to go and I want a friend. To come with me, okay? Is that so crazy? <laughs> no, you don't think that's crazy at all. You think that sounds fantastic, actually. You don't ask for any details, because who gives a shit? You show up on the block. We're not going to talk about how you got there or whatever, because what a waste of time. You're just there. Lanera's <laughs> met up with you, too. I love how, like, the 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 narration has also just, like, stopped caring altogether, too. 
Lanera mentioned there might be dancing, so you decided to really dress up for the occasion. Oh man, you went fucking nuts. You're wearing a cape and shit, but also like fishnets, maybe a sexy bra if that's your thing. <laughs> whatever happened to, whatever you happen to drudge out of some dumpster or another. <laughs> Honestly, you can imagine whatever you want here because- but no, it's a total- ah, blah 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 blah, let's back up. Honestly, you can imagine whatever you want here, but no, it's a com- but no, it's complete bullshit, and you look like a total slut. Thank you? Lynera isn't wearing anything special because we would have had to pay someone to redraw all her sprites. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, they've just stopped giving a crap, didn't they? From the looks of it, you're heading over to somebody's hive? Party? You're rolling up on some kind of joint that, from past experience, you can now surmise is an alien domicile. It's pretty big and maybe belongs to someone on the blue end of the spectrum. Back here again. Is this block just where all the jade blooded schoolgirls love to get down and dirty? It hits you like a bucket of ice when you realize whose hive you're walking straight towards this time. This is our daughter's hive. Oh no! Oh, that's just great. Your friend Ardata. Boy, do you love Ardata. Can't wait to see her again. Oh god. As you approach, you can immediately tell what kind of deal they have going on here. You can hear the tunes bumping from all the way down the block. And when you get near enough to see there are obviously to see there are obviously a bunch of teens passed out drunk on the lawn. This is a full-blown frat house rager. Ardata is crazy, Copper. Ardata is like one of the very first troll friends we made, and she has like a torture dungeon. And she just like live streams murder in her basement for fun. We made friends with her. Somehow. <laughs> Definitely doesn't seem like Lynera's sort of scene. That's because it isn't. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm doing this. You kind of can't either. You're not even in the front door, and you can already feel the sweat pouring out of your armpits. This is going to be so much fun! <laughs> like, oh, I'm not feeling so good, I'll just go. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see, you pass all the smash lawn teens and go, up to no and go up to knock on the front door. You have to rap on it a few times until the telltale sound of clicking heels faintly reaches your ears. The door opens and you discover that the gracious hostess standing on the other side is none other than your best friend, Ardana. Woohoo! My god. Why? She looks surprised to see you for only a moment before her face resolves into a wicked grin. Ardana probably wants to kidnap the guests after they become so drunk they fall asleep. Oh god. She would do that, wouldn't she? Ah, ha 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 ha. My, my, my. Look what the purr beast dragged in. Back for more so soon, my sweet. You're not actually sure how much time has passed since you last ran into our data, but it doesn't feel like it can be described by in any metric by soon. You've been physically savaged so many times since then, you're not sure what you're blocking out, though. You tell Ardata you're really, 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 really glad to see her, because you totally are. You tell her you weren't expecting her to be hosting a party, though. Oh, I don't know if I'd call it a party. More like a friendly kickback of sorts. Sort of exclusive, really. All of the world's finest influencers are here. How exactly did you hear about my little shindig? While I certainly consider you to be one of my finest friends, I don't recall inviting you. You gesture vaguely to Lynera. She doesn't seem to know how to lie and immediately cracks under the pressure. <laughs> um, one of the other jades from my cloister told me to come. <laughs> His name is Lank, but I don't think he was invited either. Ah, so Lank told Lynera to come to this party. I get the impression we kind of always come out here. <laughs> Basically, we're crashing, if that's okay. <laughs> Well, of course. What's an informal soiree without a few entirely uninvited interlopers? Lanera doesn't seem to know if she's being sarcastic or not, and you aren't sure if she is either, to be honest. You're like, are you fucking with us? And she's like, ho ho ho, moo ha ha ha, or whatever. Of course not. 
I just have I had I just have but one question for you, my dears. Oh god. Why is she getting so close? Our daughter beckons you near. You obey her slavishly. She then she leans in close into your ear and intones. Do you hereby certify under penalty of law that you are of age to view adult content within your state of legal residence? What? What? Why? No. No, I'm already uncomfortable with this paragraph and I'm only two lines in. <laughs> Have, have acknowledged the contents of this volume's accompanying mature content description and are comfortable with the prospect of engaging with challenging or otherwise controversial fictional material? Ah, uh, well, let's save. I don't know if I like where this is going. I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy this at all, in fact. Oof, you're too scared. We're too scared. Oh man, the sound of that is making you quake in your slutty little boots. Controversial fictional material, you say? Damn, it's almost starting to sound like a woman wrote this. Count you out. Wait, what? Do not understand what just happened there. Ardata clicks her tongue. I I don't understand that. I I don't know what I just read there. Like What the hell? I I A woman definitely didn't write that line 100% positive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's... <laughs> I don't... Hmm. You know what? I don't know what to make of that line. I don't know what to make of that line. Let's, let's just move on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Our daughter clicks her tongue. She reaches for the cup of markers she keeps on a table next to the door and pulls one out. You flinch back as she, as she wields it like a weapon to draw a big, draw a big blue X on the back of your hand. Here. Now all of my fine guests will know I've, we have a delicate little angel on our hands. And then she turns to Lynera. And what about you, my sweet thing? Huh? Oh, I'm not real, so it's cool. Very well then. Oh my gosh, so much fourth wall breaking here. Welcome to the bash. Drinks are free, but if you die of poisoning, you're contractually obligated to croak in range of my one of my cameras. Tulu! Ardata blows you a toxic kiss and saunters off to mingle with her enthusiastic guests. You and Lynera step past the threshold and have a look around. Lynera is visibly nervous, which is unfortunately a little bit infectious. You ask her where her friend is. She glances about a bit. Yeah, I, l let me let me just say like about that line about like whether or not a woman wrote it, like that that bit. I'm I'm just like unclear about what message is trying to be conveyed there so that's kind of why I'm like moving on and like not thinking about it because I don't understand what they're trying to say there and I'd probably have to like go look it up later so anyway this route's author is non-binary I mean okay <laughs> I still don't understand what they're trying to say though um, maybe MSPA reader is meant to be, you know, that type of character kind of unexpected, even a little boring. Eh, I don't know. Anyway, the whole point is I don't understand what was going on there, and I will think about it <laughs> later. <laughs> you and Lynera step past the threshold and have a look around. Lynera is visibly nervous, which is unfortunately a little bit infectious. You ask her where her friend is. She glances about a bit. Oh, I don't know. He's... Oh, over there. You follow her gaze into the living area of the house. It's a far cry from the side outside. The music's not nearly so bumping as you originally thought it was. The whole shebang seems to have a pretty chill... Seems to have a pretty chill teenager's drinking Kool-Aid vibe, apart from the fact that it's definitely not Kool-Aid. Everybody's milling about, chatting amiably. <clears throat> 
You spot a few familiar faces. Demon flirting with roasting his with roasting his Frank in the hearth. <laughs> Elward leaned casually against the door frame to the kitchen and talking to a cute girl. Skyla recounting some enrapturing rodeo caper to a group of gathered trolls. It's a real diverse roster of friendly folks. Oh, actually, yeah, I can I can see uh hold on. So yeah, I can actually so this must be Demon right here. And We've got L word over here. And then, oh, here's Skylo over here. Yay! Friends, friends, friends. You spot Lanera who is pointing to You spot Lanera who is pointing to you at the center of the parlor's arrangement of couches and arms. Wait, couches and armchairs. Sorry, hold on. I got thrown off by like the the two at the center. Like what the heck? I don't understand. You spot who Oh, sorry. I missed the word who here. Let me let me back up and read this more slowly. <laughs> you spot who Linera is pointing to at the center of the parlor's arrangement of couches and armchairs, sat among a group of friends on the floor, the only other jade blood in the room. He's even more impeccably dressed and done up than the rest of the markedly fashion forward jades you've met. When you catch a sight of Linera, his face lights up, and he rises to make his way over to you and greet you. Oh, Linera, you've made it after all. I was starting to think you weren't going to come. Well, this is a very, like, nice, classy music. I like it. That flower crown. I love the flower crown. Haha, <laughs> well, surprise! I didn't not come, I mean. I did come. Hi, I'm here. Lol. You cringe, but Lank seems otherwise unaffected by Lanera's astonishingly embarrassing display. He turns to you with a warm smile. And who's this? You can't help but you can't help but get a little flustered when your eyes meet. His makeup and stylings might lean to the severe and feminine, but he has a contrastively calming and masculine voice that puts you at ease straight away. Oh yeah, if, if y'all want to continue discussing the, uh, what the message of, of, or like the, the writing earlier, um, you can certainly do that in Discord as well. We actually have a Homestuck specific channel, which might be a good place for that, if you'd like to carry on with that conversation. By all means. Uh, let's see. He seems to have quite the opposite effect on Lanera. Before you can answer yourself, she starts blabbering, blabbering a mile a minute. Oh, this is my friend! I invited them, they're an alien, and I guess I almost murdered them because I was jealous of their friendship with Branya. <laughs> lol. But I didn't, and we're friends now, and I'm starting to work past my self-destructive obsession with her, and they agreed to come with me because I'm socially anxious and afraid of you, lol. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, that's awfully nice of them. Hold on, sorry. I know that was a lot at once. Let me reorganize that statement into a clearer, digestible list of bullet points. You've absolutely no need to do that, Lynera. I've understood your points just fine. Oh, okay. Lank looks back at you. Thank you for helping Lynera feel more comfortable here. Why don't you come and sit with us? Lank turns and gestures to the other trolls he was speaking with before. A teal-blooded boy and an indigo-blooded girl, neither of whom you recognize. They both have notebooks in their laps. They give you friendly waves. Um, okay, sounds great. What are we doing? We were just- we were just in the middle of a poetry reading. I don't know if you've prepared anything of your own to share, but you might find it relaxing just to listen. P poetry Lanera's face has gone bright green. Oh boy. Why would you think I've written any poetry? I, uh, I don't really. It was merely a suggestion. Have you? Well, I- maybe. Wait, no! You put a comforting hand on Lanera's shoulder, intuitingly, intuiting immediately that she has indeed written plenty of poetry, but is embarrassed by the prospect of sharing any of it. You remind her she's among trusted friends here and has nothing to fear. Oh, I guess you're right. Well then, please come and join us. Lank leads you back to his group, inviting you to sit down with them in a circle. Lynera goes to deliberate lengths to insert you between herself and Lank so that you're, you're the one sitting next to him. Why don't we pick back up where we left off? 
I was just about to read my latest piece. You say that sounds great. Lank's two friends close their eyes and take each other's hands. You and Lynera are both plenty surprised when Lank and the Indigo Blood sitting next to Lynera try to take yours to close the circle. At your obviously shocked expression, Lank explains, We find physical contact helps us feel closer on a spiritual level during our poetry sessions. But if you aren't comfortable with it, you're under no obligation. You feel really respected right now, so you and Lynera both assent to join the circle. She even takes the initiative to hold your hand first. Lank reaches out and takes your fingers gently in his. You don't know what it is, but you can't help yourself from blushing shyly. His hand is soft and warm in yours, short red nails immaculately manicured. Then let me begin. This is a short poem I've written in free verse based on something haunting me as of late. Reflecting back on one of my most complicated and passionate past relationships. Forgive me, this might be a bit raw. It is as of yet untitled. Lank draws a deep breath and closes his eyes. His notebook is open in his lap. You can see the poem written there in an elegant hand, but he doesn't need to look at it to recite the words. What is the meaning of a memory? Question I oft ponder. Intangible and untraceable by anything but the mind, yet so potent as to leave one sick, as if poisoned or wounded in a literal sense. And what meaning is there in regret and longing? Can my lamentations change the past? Will they move the future? Shall they amount to much more than what unmoors my here and now? I restrict my world to that but which is before my eyes, to those whom I may touch, to that which I might alter. One would no doubt conclude that thoughts of you are last among what I could consider to matter. And yet you haunt, and still you haunt me yet, like a scar, like a disease, uneager to abate. Who are you, and who am I, after so long without you? I know. I don't know. I won't know. What do I know? But what I know, and what can it even mean to know? No, no, no. Ah, though it so vexes me, though so little I vaulted it when it was before me, a thing and a you I could touch and see, and know and hate and wonder, revile, worship. Now it and you are a traceless ghost, and I preoccupy myself with nothing but futile tasks of redefinition and reinterpretation and circuitous dwellings on that which I understand even less now than in the times when my wanderings might have been so easily answered with a question or a bite or a kiss or even a single word spoken honestly. Pressed though I am to give color to our bond, I look not to onyx nor ash, but that which pulses within our very veins, that so blinding jade, hard as the stone for which it is so named, twisted and pulled, hammered and forged, shaped unnaturally, as if a chain. A stricture within scriptures, a certain so meaningful tincture. Resent you, though I must, envy you, though I may. Now leagues and leagues stretch between us, and I make peace with naught but what I say. You are only that which is within me, my blood and my mind, and that is at once nothing, and the most elementary definition of everything. You realize you were holding your breath when Lank finally finishes. The circle falls into meaningful silence, taut as a wire. The tension breaks when his eyes flutter open, tears spilling over his long lashes. 
Oh, thanks, Bookworm. <laughs> I appreciate that. You squeeze Lank's hand gently. He weeps silently and beautifully. Such powerful art. He musters a wan smile as he gazes across the circle at Lynera. Lynera, would you like to read next? Lynera looks stunned. There's moisture gathering in the corner of her eyes. Of course, anyone would be moved by something so emotional and raw. Um, I guess I have a poem I could read. Lynera takes out her planner and opens it, breaking the circle of held hands. She can't recite it from memory like Lank. When she speaks, her voice is small and timid. This one's called Still. I'm still. I sit still. I do what I'm told still. I wonder about the way that I am and I think. Still? I see her every day and I still miss her. She hugs me and I still feel cold. I'm surrounded by people and I'm still alone. I'm still me. I still love her and I still hate that. Oh, Lynera! Wow, you're really proud of Lynera for opening up like this. She's crying now, too. You reach out to take her hand back in yours. The indigo blood beside her comfortingly strokes her shoulder. Sorry. It's not really good and, like, it's not really good and long like yours, Lank. I'm not a really, I'm not really a poet or anything. Yo, Totostuck, welcome in. Happy Saturday. How you doing, friend? I just wrote down how I feel. Lynera, it's fine. I thought it was beautiful. Poetry is about expressing yourself. It's not important that it be any set length or sound any certain way. All that matters is that you've spoken your blood pusher. And I think you've accomplished that remarkably. We are all very proud of you. You find yourself drawn into a group hug by Lank and the other trolls. Lynera is sobbing openly now, and her raw emotion seems to have inspired similar pathos in the others. Before you know it, you feel yourself tearing up too. Oh, goodness. It feels good to get it all out, but before long, it's becoming clear Lynera is kind of reaching her limit. She pulls back and sniffles out something about wanting to go home. Of course, Lynera, if that's what you need. I'll talk to you back at the cloister. <laughs> okay. See to it that she gets gets back safe, will you? You tell Lank that of course you will, and take Lynera carefully by the hand to lead her out of the party. She squeezes your fingers back to let you know she appreciates you. Oh, this is so wholesome and pure. You walk back from the party in a comfortable silence for a while. When you glance over at her face, it occurs to you that you've never seen Lynera this happy. Of course, this is literally the second time you've ever seen her, so you guess you don't actually have much frame of reference for what her normal emotional state actually is. <laughs> you really want to encourage her on this path of recovery she's going down and all, so you ask her about, you know, her and Lank. What? You know, her and Lank. What? We're just friends. I mean, it's not like I have a crush on him or anything. I know I've had romantic feelings for a girl before, so it'd be really problematic if I liked a boy now. Oh, you say. You're sorry. You didn't know. <clears throat> it's okay. Just don't let it happen again. Lynera gives a warm smile and reaches out to pull you into a hug. <clears throat> right, girl, you can be bi. Or pan, honestly. Thank you for helping me. I was really nervous and I think if it hadn't been for your help, I wouldn't have been able to come at all. <laughs> Prob problematicism dodged. <laughs> But I did, so thanks. It wasn't perfect, but I think I really opened up tonight. I'll see Lank again. And you, I hope. And in the future, things will be easier. <laughs> right? You're certain they will. You put a comforting arm around her shoulders and walk her the rest of the way home. This is... I, I keep thinking to myself, like... This is, like, such a nice, wholesome episode, and things are just, like, going so well. There's- I'm waiting for a shoe to drop here. Like, there's gotta be something <laughs> that goes wrong here. 
Also, we have another decision point to go back to where we choose to like consent to the adult content. And I'm very afraid for that, but we have to go through every decision point because we've done it for 17 volumes and wouldn't really be great to stop now. It is still a good path, even if it's not actually the link path. You feel like this night really taught you an important lesson. Not everything is about collecting the largest quantity of friends, as is humanly possible. Sometimes, strengthening your bond with someone you already know can be just as rewarding. Or perhaps this is the, the point here. So screw you, you say, to the concept of good endings and bad endings and narrative railroading. This route makes you feel heckin' valid, and that's fine by you. Oh, oh my goodness. That was unexpected and wonderful. <laughs> that, well, that deviated from the, like, formula we've been seeing this whole time. Huh. What do you know? I like that. I like that a lot, actually. This is, this is one of the best paths, actually. <laughs> MSPAR really is wearing a cape, fishnets, and a bra. <laughs> Valid! Yay for valid. Wait. Oh, there's more? We may have spoken too soon. Okay. Let's save there. Um... Hold this thought, everyone. Let's actually... Go back to the first decision point. And then we'll go back to that other decision point where we're like, do we want to understand? All right. Do we certify under penalty of law that we are of age to view adult content? Blah, blah, blah. You bet, chief. Tell her to let you in. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. Why don't you come right in then, my dear? I don't want to see you making any little posts online about how my party was too fucking problematic for you, though. Our daughter steps back and welcomes you again into her abode with a grandiose gesture. You're very, very excited. Let me turn down the music. For our daughter's party, and you know definitively that you will enjoy absolutely every second of what she has in store for you. Once you stepped in the past, once you stepped in past the threshold, Ardana blows you a toxic kiss and saunters off to mingle with her enthusiastic guests. Oh wow! The first thing that hits you once you're in the door, once you're in the door, is the music. It's a solid wall of bass that reverberates through your own body down to your bones. Okay, so we've gone to like a different part of the party now. The intense dance track is blasting so loud you can hardly hear yourself think. It has to be this loud to drown out all the sh sorry, all the shouting coming from the living room. As you apprehensively advance, it becomes quickly clear that Lynera is completely out of her element here. She's a bundle of nerves beside you, practically glued to your hip. When you actually step into the living room, she physically attaches herself to your arm. Wow, this is more than I was expecting. You too. It's a scene of absolute chaos. The living room of the house is filled to the brim with rowdy teens, dancing rhythmlessly to the pounding music. The furniture has all been knocked over or otherwise destroyed, and you can make a pretty good guess of what's filling, it, filling all the red cups you see in everyone's hands. You're about to tell Lynera you wouldn't blame her if she wants to dip, but you can't get the words out before you're being flagged down by a jade-blooded boy who's just muscled his way out of the throng of partygoers with a few of his friends in tow. Lynera, you made it! Lynera all but flings herself away from your body and freezes, like a scared animal as the troll approaches. Oh, this music is different. This music is different from the from the other track we had for Lank, for uh for Lank. Huh. Y'all know I just do the I just do the music, right? By <laughs> James Roach from the album I Saw Friends. Oh my gosh. For all the commotion and ruckus, he's still remarkably well put together. The vigorous dance huddle doesn't seem to have disturbed his sharp makeup or his impeccably coiffed hair. There is a curious red stain down the front of his white shirt, though. 
He has a slutty looking indigo blooded girl on his right arm and an even sluttier looking teal blooded boy on his left. Though he shakes them off and waves them away by the time he reaches you and Lynera at the entryway into the room. Um, hi, Lank. Yeah, I'm here. You watch with amusement as Lynera practically bursts into flame under his gaze, and it only gets worse when he sidles up to give her a startling, startlingly intimate embrace. She squeaks and tries to hug him back, but is too timid to actually touch him with her hands. You can see sweat pouring down her face. Yeah, this is this is like a completely different reality altogether. This is like this is a completely different lank, actually. After a solid five seconds that seems to include Lank smelling Lynera's hair, he pulls back to smile down at Lynera with a heavy gaze. Lynera's face is bright green and her eyes are bugging out of her skull from how flustered she is. But she's not... not into it, you don't think? It's hard to tell, but you kind of get the impression he'd be dead by now if she weren't. Either way, it's awkward. Lucky for Lynera, Lank either doesn't notice or doesn't care. He settles into a comfortable for him posture with his arm casually around Lynera's waist and turns to you. Oh, who's this? Um, this is my uh, friend. Yeah. Lank quirks an eyebrow. You have friends. The question seems to leave Lynera speechless, so Lank takes the opportunity to look back at you. His eyes rake up and down your body in a way that leaves you feeling distinctly objectified. Oh, aren't you interesting? Is there a reason you look like... that? What a question. He doesn't explain what that is specifically referring to, and given both your alien status and your state of dress, it could mean any number of things. You might take it as an insult if not for the way he licks his lips after he says it. He can't seem to pry his eyes off of you. You look at Lynera for a cue, but she's too out of it to give you any sort of intelligible sign. So, you just explained how you crash-landed on this alien planet an indeterminate amount of time ago, and you don't really know what you're doing, or much of anything about anything. The fact of your appearance could be due either to this, or that you're generally a disaster of a being irrespective of your planetary origin. <laughs> how fascinating. Me too, Copper. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I've never met an alien before. Well, you have. Lots of times. In fact, literally everyone and everything here is alien to you. You find your word diarrhea becoming more and more awkward and embarrassing as Lank's eyes start burning a hole in the center of your chest. <laughs> There's no need to be so shy. I don't bite until asked. Lank disconnects himself from Lynera as he rounds on you. It's like he's lost any interest in her existence now that you're in front of him. Lynera looks at you with a completely pathetic expression that readily informs you as to what your response needs to be. You'll be damned if you aren't going to be the best wingman possible, so you deftly ignore Lank's blatant pass and turn the conversation back to Lynera. You ask Lank how long he and Lynera have known each other. Lank raises his eyebrows at the question. Uh, well, I suppose since she was chosen for the cloister? Some number of sweeps ago. Yo, how's it going, Star? Welcome in! Happy Saturday! I don't remember, really. It was 2.43 sweeps. Oh, right, then that many, I guess. Huh, that's a pretty long time, actually. Haha, <laughs> yeah! Pretty impressive that you've managed to go a solid 2.4 of them without saying a single word to me that wasn't circulated to me secondhand from your snide gossiping behind my back. Oh, uh, wow, talk about whiplash. Lynera's eyes get big like saucers. What? Oh, uh, what? What are you? I don't know what you're talking about. The tone of the conversation has totally morphed from fire to ice in an instant, though neither Lank's expression nor demeanor have changed much. He slips in the knives he slips in the knives with all the calm composure of a casual statement. What, are you going to pretend you didn't spend the better part of the last two and a half sweeps complaining about how much I disgusted you? Come now. You do know that everyone is aware you're a nasty little bitch, right, Lynera? Oh no. Uh um I I mean don't take it the wrong way. I really don't mind. 
I'm hardly in a position to criticize. I was just curious what caused the sudden change of heart after so long decrying my vain and slatternly lifestyle. I don't... I... Have the impending ordeals really... Have the impending ordeals finally made the little clock start to tick down in that dry, dusty nook of yours? <sighs> Did you figure I was the only one who might be loose enough to be willing to clean out the cobwebs before you sh get shipped off to Space Church and never have the chance again? Just wondering. There's a long, excruciating moment where Lynera says nothing. She just stares up at Lank beside her with a com with a completely shell-shocked expression. But before you can try to pipe up in Lynera's defense, she bursts into tears. I don't like this timeline either, Bookworm. He needs his respect weapon juice. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh no. When Lynera suddenly turns and makes a mad dash to run out the door and away from the party, you're torn between running after her and giving this jerk a real piece of your mind. Your mind's made up when you look back at Lank just in time to catch him rolling his eyes. Hey, you say? That was kind of rude, don't you think? Lank snorts. Me, rude. <laughs> Are you perhaps attempting to fuck with me? Clearly you haven't spent that much time around this bitter pill if you think that was anything short of precisely what she deserves. You concede you maybe don't have a full enough grasp on Jade Blood Cloister social dynamics to make a definitive judgment on whether or not Lynera deserves to have been so ruinously owned, but she's your friend, and what good are you if you don't stick up for people you care about? <laughs> Who's going to hold him for all of us to take turns taking swings at him? <laughs> I love it. I have no idea what even got her so upset. Well, like I said, it's not like I really care what she says about me. But you don't have- but you don't get to spend as much time as she does being such a venomous little snake and act surprised when someone calls you out on it. Then why did you invite her, you ask? It seems needlessly cruel of Lank to lead her on to un- lead her on on under false pre- Ah, hold on. There were two ons there. That's throwing me off. It seems needlessly cruel of Lank to lead her on under false pretenses, even if he never intended to be her friend at all. I promise you I had no such designs. The only reason I even invited her to this thing is that my ex is being a real blood-sucking bitch and no one else wanted to go. I was willing to give her an honest shot, but I have no time for a vicious slandering nag who can't even admit what she is. I thought it might be interesting to see what that crusty little shrew might be like if you could manage to rest her bulge free, rest her bulge free of whatever excruciating knot she's got it tied into. But I guess now we'll never know. Well, this is clearly a conversation you're going to have to switch the out of pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, we did the poetry timeline first. Yeah, this is this is quite some whiplash here. <laughs> what? You try to explain the historical significance of Switzerland's political neutrality on your home planet. Lank's eyes glaze over like he's listening to you recite a sports almanac of cricket stats. That's nice. Anyway. Since I seem to have scared away my date, why don't you stay a while so you and I can get to know each other a little better? You seem much more interesting than she is, anyway. When did Link get up so close to you? Your heart beats a little faster when he smiles at you like that, so poisonous and shamelessly laced with intent. Lynera is definitely not the only one coming off like a snake here. <laughs> I have less time to waste than most, my dear. Never seen the value in beating around the bush. Well, maybe it'd be socially prudent for you to go after Lynera and make sure she's okay. But it's also not her volume of the friend sim, so instead of doing that, you're gonna stick around and see what this spectacularly briary prima donna is all about. You had your fucking chance to bail out of this shit show, but all that's left to do now is barrel downhill as meteorically as you can manage. Oh god. <laughs> Fantastic. Care to dance? Why the fuck not? Lank laughs pleasantly and reaches out to take you by the hand. The contact gives you a little thrill despite yourself. He's got nice hands, soft and warm and well taken care of, and you know it's not and you know it's going to be one hell of a ride wherever he's taking you. Come with me. You do. He doesn't lead you straight to the dance floor though. He takes you around the throng of dancing partygoers over to the kitchen of the house first. You weren't expecting to find a familiar face waiting for you there. Oh, it's Elward! 
Fancy meeting you here. You don't find it that surprising, honestly. You two know each other? You could say that. That's just great. You give discounts to friends. I sure fucking don't. You know the price, pretty boy. Pay up. <laughs> You're a little confused. What is being purchased here, exactly? Elward gives you a funny look. You a drone? What? Hush. You do as you're told and watch Lank and Elward carry out their shady transaction. Lank hands over the credits and receives an opaque little baggie of something in return. Oh well, you guess you don't really need to see what's in the thing to figure out what it is at this point. <laughs> as soon as the deal is done, Lank has his hand at the small of your back and is deftly guiding you away from the scene of the crime. Is buying drugs a crime here? <laughs> You aren't really well versed about the laws of Alternia, but it honestly doesn't really seem like anybody would give much of a shit about anybody doing drugs out here. Because the clandestine transactions are just for the aesthetic. <laughs> oh boy. Lank's got you back in a shady corner of the party and is pressing one of the tablets he bought into your hand with a sly grin. He expects you to join in. Oh, good heavens, what's going on here? You're like, uh, hold on a minute. Your experiences with alien drugs haven't really been that great, honestly, and you're not sure you're that excited for a repeat performance. Lank's immediate response is to sneer. Oh, I see. You're one of those people. One of what people? You know, a bit boring, maybe? There are many words that could be used to describe you, but you don't think boring is a remote contender. You're always doing all kinds of unbelievably stupid shit, and getting into uncountable, wacky, and life-threatening situations. Yeah, this is a very, very nope scenario. Nope, nope, nope. Is it really that fucking much to ask for there to be one time you don't rush headfirst into doing something you know is going to fuck you up and be totally awful? That's why there's a disclaimer, he's a predator. Yeah, yeah, no. He definitely is. Very Predator-ish vibes here. Lank's lips press into a thin, annoyed line. These things aren't cheap, you know. Well, we didn't ask you to buy them for us, dick. I bought them for you. Again, we didn't ask you to. Well, you didn't ask him to do that, did you? Yeah, thank you, game. Oh, come on. You're really going to be like this? You're really going to be like this, dude? Yeah, you totally are. Lank sighs dramatically. Fine. No, not demon! Leave demon alone! Lank casts around for the nearest victim and grabs his attention with the hand around his wrist. To your dismay, it's your sweet and innocent hot dog chum, Demon. Alas, there's nothing you can do to stop him from falling prey to Lank's wicked designs. Here, have these. Oh yeah, great! Thanks! I'd love to put drugs on my wiener. Oh my god, no! No, 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a tragedy, but before you know it, Lank has a hold of you again and is dragging you off. No, 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 no. Let's just dance. You're not too much of a square to do that, are you? Basically, the two very different routes reflect how he can either be something or be the opposite of that thing. Yeah, yeah. Of course not. Dancing is basically the one thing you actually plan to come here and do, so that's just great. You go along with Lank enthusiastically when he pulls you over to the writhing mass of bodies bumping and grinding on the dance floor. You get down to it. You soon discover that Lank has a, uh, very interesting dancing style. Oh god. <laughs> and by interesting, you mean it primarily consists of directly grinding his body against yours in an incredibly shameless fashion. But pressed in as you are from all sides by sweaty and inebriated bodies, there's not exactly much room for Troll Jigas to begin with. <laughs> Lank is up on you so close it's hard not to sweat. He has his hands at your hips, and your face fixed with sharp eyes. His heavy stare is nearly hypnotic, so blatant and undisguised in his expression. It's clear what he wants, and maybe that's more than you're prepared to give, but when he looks at you like that, it's impossible to look away. You just go with it. Why not? It feels good and it's not like anyone else is watching. 
You're surrounded by trolls, boxed in and pouring sweat, and yet it feels like you're you're the only two people there. What? How are we actually feeling this way? How on earth are we actually feeling this way now? Link draws in, teeth by her ear, and this close you can hear him easily. You can hear him easily even over the overwhelming pound of the bass. You have the palest skin I've ever seen. Yeah, you tell him you're literally f white, which is like blank. That makes you super racially inoffensive, FYI. <laughs> oh my god. You let Link know he can see he can see you any way he wants, which is even more woke than making a decision. <laughs> Thin as paper. I can see all the way inside of you. And your veins and your red all your veins and your red blood. You smell like candy. I wonder how you'd taste. Wow, haha, <laughs> you say, that's like some shit a vampire would say. Presuming I'm a rainbow drinker would be an awfully reductive and literal reading of my character. <laughs> I'm just making blatant sexual pass. <laughs> oh, okay, good thing that's all cleared up. You take this as an opportunity to really let loose, showing off everything you've got in the sexy dance acumen department. Lank is a little bewildered. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you're like, you're like, what aren't I doing? There's a fire on the dance floor, and you just struck the match. You're just fucking it up in here, really getting it, breaking it down, bopping and crumping and whatever. You're smashing your ass into everyone around you and getting hot and heavy with those lusty moves. There's a point where Lank has to step back. You presume to properly behold your art in all its glory. <laughs> but it soon becomes clear that it's not your prodigious dancing skills that have given him pause. You follow his startled gaze and see the cause for alarm. Branya is here, and she looks pissed. Oh shit. Branya is still standing in the entryway and contending with Ardata, and it looks like she hasn't caught sight of you yet, but Lank isn't wasting any time. Before you realize what's happening, Lank has you by the wrist and is hauling you away from the dance floor and off down the hallway. Oh my gosh, Jade Blood Mom is here to save us all, maybe. Branya, save us, please! Lank finds safety in a bedroom. Oh, god damn it. No. <laughs> Res respite block, you remind yourself. And you take and you take stock of the conspicuous absence of any bed, and the presence of the revolting looking slime cocoon in which trolls allegedly spend their repose. You hold each other in a tense and nervous silence pressed against the locked door. What feels like an eternity passes, your breath held. The sound of your blood rushing through your own ears is almost enough to drown out the music. Seconds turn to minutes, and nobody comes to find you. It seems, for now, you've escaped Branya's notice. I didn't want to escape Branya's notice, though. I didn't want to. When you turn your head to look back at Lank, you find he's been staring at you for some time. <clears throat> I haven't been able to take my eyes off of you since the moment I first saw you. You're just so interesting. You freeze like a hare staring down a snake. Lank lifts his hand to brush a thumb across your cheek, fingers curling under your chin. You meet his eyes. His pupils are so black. I want to know what it'd be like to kiss you. Lank's tongue, star Lank's tongue darts out to wet his painted lips. Do you want to kiss me? Whoa. Well, you've already clicked on at least two mature content disclaimers to get this far. Why the hell not? Lank leans in and presses his lips against yours. He- oh god, this is actually happening? Jeez- oh god, why? He kisses much more sweetly than he looks. His lips are soft and wet and taste like blackberries. This beats making out with a couple of greasy teens behind a dumpster, that's for sure. <laughs> when one of his sharp fangs nicks your bottom lip, you don't even care. Don't blame you, non baronary I don't blame you. But when a drop of your blood beads out onto his invasive tongue, Lank draws back just an inch. You taste sharp and dangerous. Like a weapon. Is that a good thing? It's not a bad thing. Link pulls back further. His hand slips from your cheek, and his fingers trail down your neck to rest on your collar, thumb brushing against the thrum of your pulse. Have you ever paled before? What? Oh, God. Um, I'm just not even going to read this aloud anymore. I don't like where this is going, no. Mm. Mm -mm. Nope. My first time, huh? <laughs> Good lord.
Wow, wow. Is this like actual just like troll porn? Yeah, I don't blame you, Bookworm. I'm just gonna like, I am not even reading this. Not even reading this. Oh, wait, Branya's, Branya's, Branya's showing up though. Branya's showing up. Branya's voice starts to rise shrill above the heavy music. Lank! Lank's hands shoot out at lightning speed to dry your clothes, but before you can even so much as gasp, he presses one of his palms over your mouth to keep you quiet. Oh no, no, no. He's getting closer. Lank! I know you're here! You need to come out and come home right now! Lank leans in close to your ear. Shh. What will you do? Um, well, let's save here. <laughs> Call in his mom. This has gotten problematic enough. Mom! You rip Lank's hand off your mouth and start yelling for Branya. What the fuck, dude? Lank tries to scramble away from you to make some sort of last ditch effort to escape, but it's no use. Branya hears you and comes running, furious. She hulks the locked door off its hinges before you can even get up to let her in. You duck flying chunks of alien architecture and scuttle off to avoid what you fear might be further alien fists. Lank! As angry as her voice is, some of the fury goes out of her face the moment her gaze lands on Lank's state of partial undress. She reflexively brings a hand up to shield her eyes. I, what in the world? You put your clothes back on right this instant, young man! Lank freezes where he stands, apparently accepting that he's been caught. There's nowhere left to run. If he doesn't intend to fling himself out a window, a sneer uncoils on his face. Oh please, save the Purity Act. Like this is anything you haven't already seen a dozen times before. Branya's face goes bright jade. What? What in the world are you implying? I would never. Forget Lynera, you've always been the craziest bitch in the whole cloister. You know you aren't actually our loosest, right? Branya marches right up to Lank and slaps him hard across the face. Lank makes an undignified noise as he recoils from the blow. It looks like that really hurt. His, ha his face is stinging bright under the handprint. He forces out a strained laugh. My word, Branya. If you wanted to join us, all you had to do was- Oh, fuck you, Lank. Damn, you wish you had some popcorn right around now. You just kind of sit back and take it all in. Lank's invective has its apparent desired effect. Branya is all but steaming at this point, hands balled into fists at her sides. You kind of want to say hi to your friend, but she's a little preoccupied, it seems. I am not going to rise to your petty baiting. You know you're in the wrong here. One, we've spoken time and time again about recklessly sneaking out to these parties, and now you're dragging Lynera into your mess. Two, Lynera has told me all about all the th all about the things you were saying and doing to her, and it's completely unacceptable, Lank. Three, you've had more than enough lectures about the way you treat your flushed quadrant partners, and it absolutely needs to stop. Four, you are coming back with me to the cloisters right now. When we're at home, we are going to have one last serious talk about this, and if there aren't any changes, there are going to be consequences. Eventually, Branya's overbearing hollering seems to finally break Lank down. He sighs, shoulders slumped, and rolls his eyes. Fine, fine. Branya crosses her arms indignantly as she waits for Lank to finish fix fixing his clothes. Lank buttons his shirt, puts back, his, puts back on his jacket and his tie, and then he has to go to retrieve his palm husk, which he seems to have discreetly slid over to where you're standing. He casually saunters his way over, and instead of picking up his own device, snatches yours out of your hand. Hey, I've got to go, but let me give you my chitter information. Nope, not interested. Maybe we can pick up where we left off later, sweetheart. Nope, not interested. <laughs> Branya stomps over to grab Lank by the ear and drag him away, but not before he's finished putting his chitter contact into your palm husk. He shoves it back into your hand, mouths you a see you later, and is fully hauled out of the room. Hypocrite. You need to shut your mouth. And then they're gone. Friendship accomplished, you guess? Chitter mutuals? <laughs> what the hell? Why? This market is blocked. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad he gave us his chitter information so we can just block him now. We win, but did we? Did we though? Oh, 
And now it goes to, do you want to understand again? All right, hold on. Um, this is probably the same as the other one, but let me just save it in a different slot just in case. All right, against my better judgment, I'm just gonna go back to this point and this might be uncomfortable. I'm just gonna like click through this and like not read this. <laughs> I'll just like summarize what's going on. Okay, Branya's looking around. She's gone, we've lost her. Um, where were we? And um, this is like, do 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 do. Wow, what? Okay, so they yada 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 that thing. Wow, we really, we really did the thing. We really did the thing, didn't we? Oh, and now he's just gonna ditch us, aren't we? Just gonna ditch us, right? We're like, add me on Chitter! Like, he's like, no. Thought you would take the obvious hint. Just weren't that good? Oh my god. Wow. Okay, well, I'm completely fine just having clicked through that and like not having read that.